Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. While we all saying different things, we all never make it like, hey, what's going on? Man, what's your nationality? You said black. But you see African American. But y'all see how we saying going around the world, everybody saying something different, but we the same people. Why is that? I mean, Isaiah 1 and 3. We got to project the voice too. But, um, the book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel, oh Israel, doth not know. My people doth not consider. So right there, the Bible just said Israel yes, does not now, know where they come I from. Sure the top of my God head just gave two examples. He said an ox, so an ox considered a, a dumb animal. animal. You ever heard that saying, dumb as an ox? An ox is considered dumb, but the ox know where he come from. The ass, the dunk, is also considered a dumb animal. But God said those animals know where they come from, but Israel does not know. So what we finna show you today, you are the Israelites. Right there it said Israel don't know where they come from. They don't know where their home is. And just right now, just with that question, we ask people that all the time. There's no way we the same people and we saying different answers. Why is that? Because we don't know who we are. We finna show you who you are. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and start at verse. Give me uh one and one. Because what y'all going to understand, let me ask this other question. Can you hear me Who is the Bible written to? Is it written to everybody? Yeah. Yeah. It's written to the lost tribe. Correct. But that's not the answer that everybody gives when I ask that the audience right is. So we read right there, it said Israel. That's something I want to deal with. That's the New Testament. I'm saying in the, in the, right, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, Paul wrote that. Hey, 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 one that, question. That, how do you, how do you, said, there are those that are not of the, the you talk about the Israelites. Paul didn't write that. What you quoting right there, so, Christ wrote that. I That's in John 10. He said, other sheep I have that are not of this fold. He's talking about the Israelites that got scattered. Right. That's what he's talking about. The New yep. Testament is got to be uh, yep. It's very low, though. It's got to be should I, should I let's deal with it first. Because I, I wanted to touch on some first, but let's deal with that first. Who was Paul talking to? Let's first get Romans, not Romans, get uh, Acts 9 and 15. Exactly. That's where I'm finna go. We finna find out who the Gentiles are. Because that's where a lot of the confusion comes from. As we go into that, what's your name, sir? John. John? Mr. John. That's good that you read. A lot of our people don't read. This is where the confusion come from. I want to show everybody this. This is where the confusion come from. This is why when you pick the Bible up, you think it's talking about everybody. I'm going to read off all these dates. Some of y'all might ruffle some feathers because you're in these religions. The Baptist religion created by John Smith. What color is John Smith? A white man. When was this created? 1608. Where were we in 1608? Who said? Mr. McKenzie. Slavery. We was in slavery. We didn't make this up. This ain't our culture. Joseph Smith. What did he make? Mormon. When was this made? 1830. Where were we in 1830? Slavery. Ellen G. White. One of the creators of Seven Day Adventists. When was this made? 1863. When did we get emancipated? 1863? 1865. 1865. This is 1863. That's two years prior. L.A.G. White makes seven-day adventures. We didn't make that. Then we move over to Jehovah's Witness. 
any kingdom halls all over Chicago. Who made this? Charles T. Russell. When? 1872. Where were we? Slavery. Over here, Pentecostal. Any Pentecostal churches? Whoever drove down Loomis in the city on the south side. It's hundreds of churches down Loomis. And I bet you one of them Pentecostal. Who made this? Charles Parham. Another Caucasian man. Made it in 1901. We was out the chain, but we were still getting oppressed in the 1900s. Then we moved down. Islam. A lot of our people flocking to this. Right now, it's a heavy wave of our people converting to Islam. You got boxers, rappers, entertainers. But who is the creator of this? Brothers don't know this. Yes. Well, brothers follow today the masses of Islam. This is who is the founder of that. Then you got Rastafarianism. My brothers from the islands, they follow this. What is it centered around? Haiti Selassie. Guess what? Haiti Selassie is not our people. So when you got all these man-made religions in our minds, in our heads, it causes what? Confusion. Now let's get Acts 9. Gentiles. Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. Uh -huh. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles mm -hmm. and kings mm -hmm. and the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Anybody familiar with this history right here? So I'm going to give you a brief. Paul, what was Paul before he got sent on his mission? Anybody know? Mr. John, what was Paul? He was a, uh, a Jewish uh, person, but he was persecuting the, uh, the Jews at the time. Uh, he was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. The Pharisees were Jews as well. They just thought they were special, you know, more, more holy than anybody else. Kind of like, you know, the holiness people think that they are more holy than any other church. Right, 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 right. So the Pharisees, they were a group, a sect, that was supposed to teach Israel the laws, right? When Paul was a Pharisee, he killed anybody, in prison, anybody that was following Christ. Paul himself is a Israelite, is a Jew. I'm going to show you that. Read that first. Read that again in uh, Acts 9 and 15. Acts chapter 9 verse 15. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me. So this is when Paul was on his way to Damascus. He got knocked down. Christ told him, basically, you going off. You think you going the right way with how you're moving and carrying yourself. You're not going the right way. You persecute me by persecuting those that follow me. So from there, Paul repents. And then Christ gives him his mission. Go forth and say, teach. You're going to declare my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Now, give me Romans chapter 11. Let's get Paul nationality, then let's get the Gentiles that he taught. Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Uh huh. I say then, have God cast away his people? Because you know that's a doctrine. From the man made religions, let me see that sign. From the man made religions, they say that God did away with the Israelites in these churches. That's what they say. Let's see what the Bible says. Read. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Did he cast away the Israelites? Read. God forbid. That means no. Read on. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's telling you the Israelites is not done away with. He's an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. From there. Now, it said he was to teach the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Let's get Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. So when you read the Bible, every time it says Gentiles, not always talking about white folks. Again, when you have this on your mind, when you see Gentile, you see heathen, you see scattered, dispersed, whatever term, you're going to automatically associate white folks in that. So, yes. Did, did the disciples accept Paul? Did the disciples accept Paul? Yes, they did accept Paul. Remember, initially, they knew the history of Paul. They knew he was a Pharisee from the beginning. I know, but did they accept his teaching? Did they accept because Paul said that this was his gospel? He didn't say 
Hold on. Go ahead. Paul said that it was his gospel and that he had tricked the other the, the following and the following his gospel. But the Gentiles, I mean, this whole thing about the Gentiles, mm -hmm. you remember the disciples, when Paul came to them and told them that first that God knocked them off this horse and then he said Christ, because Jesus wasn't considered God until the third century. Third century at the council of the sea. Before then, the disciples didn't, he never told them he was God himself. Right? Mm -hmm. So Paul came and told them all these things. They was like, okay, well, these things are strange to us because Jesus had already told the disciples that he came for the lost tribes of Israel to recover the lost tribes. He had already gave them their mandate. So when Paul came and started telling them stuff, they was like, wait a minute, this stuff sounds strange to us. We tell you what you do. You go teach that to the Gentiles. Because the Gentiles were non-Jews. The, the, the Jews that we had today are number converts. They, they, the people that you see now, they were Europeans that convert. They're impersonating you. Right. They just converts. But it, back I, then, I want you to get Mr. John, I'm going to let you finish. And then I'm going to deal with what you're saying. I want everybody to understand. The people that are saying that they are Jews today are impersonating you. Right, right. We are the real Jews in this shop right now. We are the real Jews. But that's what Us they told the people that they were... That, that they were Gentiles and that they were the descendants of, 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 of Ham and so forth and that they were Gentiles. And, you know, they took a bunch of stuff. But the point I'm making is the disciples didn't really trust Paul. They didn't really believe in the stuff he was saying because they were like, this stuff sounds strange to us. I got mad Jesus never that. told us the stuff you say. With that, it wasn't that they didn't trust what he was saying. Remember. Where did he come from? He was a Pharisee. He was against all the followers of Christ. Jesus he was a part. Hold on, Mr. John. Hold on, Mr. John. He was a Pharisee. He killed people. He locked people up. And when he repented, people were skeptical of him. But Christ reassured, no, I'm using him. He's going to be a chosen vessel unto me. Now, the Gentiles. The Gentiles are not all nations. That's what I want to deal with first. What you said. Read that. Matthew 4, 15. Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Who did the Bible just say the Gentiles were right there? It said it was the people in Galilee. Read it again. The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. Who is Zebulon and Naphtali? Flip your fly over. Zebulon and Naphtali are one of the twelve sons, one of two of the twelve sons that come from Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The Israelites come from him. All those twelve sons. We come from those twelve sons. So right there, that's showing you. Every time I see Gentiles, I'm not talking about other nations. Now I'm going to show you when it does say that. Give me uh, one thing about Jeremiah 46 and 1. You see? That's where the confusion comes. Every time I see Gentile, every time I see Greek, it's not talking about white folks. If you're going to have a cross and over, people think that the Israelites people that are descendants of Abraham are not Gentiles. Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is, every time when you read in the Bible, you have to get the context of what's being said. Every time it says Gentile, sometimes it's talking about the Israelites. And then other times it's talking about other nations. That's what I'm going to show you right here. Now here, right here, where we're going to Jeremiah 46 and 1, is going to talk about actual other nations being called Gentiles. Because they are the real Gentiles. Read Jeremiah chapter 46 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The word of the Lord which came to Jeremiah, the prophet against the Gentiles. Against who? The Gentiles. Now let's see who these Gentiles are. He's talking about here. Read. Against Egypt. Against the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt. So right here, you see Gentiles being mentioned. Jeremiah is told to prophesy against the Gentiles. And he names who? Egyptians. Which are other nations outside of the Israelites. Let's get another example. Get Ezra now. So that's two places talking about Gentiles actually being other races. Read. 
First Ezra chapter 9, verse 69. The nation of Israel, the princes, the priests, and Levites have not put away from them the strange people of you the land. This is Ezra talking to the leaders. He said, y'all done put away the strange people Read. of the land, uh -huh. nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. Nor what? Nor the pollutions of the Gentiles. Who are these Gentiles that Ezra is talking about here? Read. To wits of the Canaanites, Hittites, Pharisites, Jebusites, and Moabites, Egyptians and Edomites. You see that? So you got to know the context. When we read in Matthew when it said Gentiles, it was talking about the Israelites right there. When we read in Jeremiah, when we read in Ezra, it was talking about literal other races. So when you hear Paul, it says Paul was a minister to the Gentiles, he's talking about the Israelites. Yeah, now, but I, I understand what you're saying, but it's not supposed to be the author of confusion. You know what I mean? That's the kind of confusion. The reason why it's confused, confusing to you or it sound confusing because we were taught that when we hear Gentiles, that mean everybody, but it don't. Get 1 Corinthians 12. So we all, for the most part, identify here as black and Hispanic, right? Can a Chinese man come in here with a sombrero and a, uh, a poncho and say he Mexican? He can wear the he can wear the clothes. He can he can have a churro in his hand the whole night. Will he be Mexican? No, you can't do that. If I if I want to put on a trucker hat, some plaid, and I want to say I'm a hillbilly, am I really a hillbilly? No, I got the clothes on. I'm acting like them, but I can't change my race. Read that verse one. Yep. Start at uh, verse one, twelve. The book of First Corinthians, chapter twelve and verse one. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Uh -huh. Ye know that ye were Gentile, carried away unto these dumb idols. You see that? So he's talking to the Corinthians right there. With all these different titles that get put on the Israelites, that's what they get everybody confused when they read. He's telling the Corinthians, ye were Gentile. Again, can you change your race? No. But you can act like another race. Everybody agree? You can act like a Japanese man. You can wear their clothes, learn their language, celebrate their day. But will you ever be Japanese? No. So how did the Corinthians become Gentiles? Read it again. Verse 2. Ye know that ye were Gentiles. Carried away unto these dumb idols. The Corinthians became Gentiles because they started worshiping the other races' gods, following their culture, everything. Now, who are the Corinthians? Because a misconception is, oh, when I read Corinthians, that's white folk, Acts 18 and 8. In order to understand Paul's letters, you got to read Acts first. Because Acts shows you all the places that Paul traveled to. And every person that Paul went to go teach was Israelites, point blank period. But the church will tell you, because we don't read, they'll say, oh, this everybody. If I don't read a book, you can tell me whatever it means, because I ain't read. But when you open it up, the Bible says otherwise. Read that. Acts chapter 18 and verse 8. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, uh -huh. believed on the Lord with all his house. Uh -huh. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed. And were baptized. Did, hold on, read that one more time. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue. Of the what? Of the synagogue. The synagogue as well. Who dwelt? Who was? Jews. Read. Believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Why? Why did it say believe and baptized? They was, they was raised in Gentile customs. These was the Jews that were scattered. What you find out about our people, let me get one of those now. We weren't just scattered during this time where Paul talking to them. We've been getting scattered for a long time. Anyone with the map. We've been getting scattered for a long time. Contrary to what they tell us in school, they didn't just take us from the west coast of Africa. They took us from all parts of the earth, scattered us all over the place. So we begin scattered all the way back to this time in Acts that we read from there. Go there. From there, go to 1 Corinthians 10. Let's show further proof 
that the Corinthians is Israelite. Because these are just examples that I'm showing you right now. Every time you read these words, it's not always talking about Caucasians or another race. 1 Corinthians 10. Yep. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Uh huh. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Hold on. As he's talking to the Corinthians, he says, Moreover, brethren, what's Paul's race? He's a Jew. He's an Israelite. So he's starting off this letter. He's writing to them, Moreover, brethren, you're not going to call everybody your brother. I know today that's common slang amongst ourselves. We say, bro, that's common speech. But when he says brethren, he's talking about my people. These is my brethren. Read. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. How that all our fathers. You see that? He said all our fathers. They got the same bloodline. See, you can't run past words like they said all our fathers. We come from the same bloodline, the same lineage. Read. Now that all our fathers were under the cloud uh -huh. and all passed through the sea. What is he talking about right there? He said all our fathers was under the cloud and all of them passed through the sea. You say what, sir? Trade. Trade. Nope, yeah. nope. Not the slave trade. What's a famous event that the Israelites went through? Somebody finna say it. Flood, nope, nope. Remember, he said they all passed through the sea. There you go. That's how you know the Corinthians is not white folks. They're not Caucasians because only the Israelites went through that. Only the Israelites, the ones that Moses led through the sea. Let's keep reading. Remember, Moses parted the sea and they walked on dry land. That's Israel. Read. And were all baptized unto Moses uh -huh. in the cloud and in the sea. Now, was Moses dipping people in water? No. What was Moses teaching the Israelites? God's commandments. He, that's how he was baptizing them with the word. Read. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? Uh -huh. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Uh -huh. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So right there, that's another sign showing you. That every time you see these names, it's not talking about white folks. Let's get the book of Romans now. Romans chapter 1. It's funny how in Christianity, they yeah, take certain words and they'll make a whole doctrine and philosophy with it. But if you just go to the first chapter of the first book, it tells you that they ain't talking about everybody. Get Romans 1 and 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, uh -huh. separated unto the gospel of now, God. If I'm a servant of Jesus Christ, I got to do what Christ told me to do. I can't remix or make my own thing up. Read. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, uh -huh. separated unto the gospel of God, uh -huh. which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, uh -huh. concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, uh -huh. which was made of the seed of David. Now wait, it said Jesus Christ. This is in the New Testament. It said Jesus Christ was made unto the seed of David. That ain't talking about sunflower seeds. What's that talking about? You say what? His lineage. He's made from the seed of David. Meaning what? Did Christ, that's telling you what? Christ had an earthly father. Ain't nobody on the You got a flyer from us, Mr. John? I do. Make sure you read that yeah, flyer. I see you all on the, uh, yeah, it's time to come to the school. I see you all on YouTube all the time. It's time to come to the school. Come learn more, Mr. John. Let's finish that up. So it's telling you what? He had an earthly father. Ain't no man or woman came on this earth no other way but through sex of a man and a woman. That's in the New Testament. People's favorite book. Read. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. It said according to the flesh. It ain't say an angel or some cartoon movie they be saying. They be saying his mama slept with an angel. How? It's telling you right here he came in the flesh and his bloodline is of David. That's why when he was walking there say son of David. King David is his great great grandfather. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, Called to be saints. Wait a minute. It said what? Called to be saints. So 
right here, Paul writing a letter to the Romans, and then he turned around and called the Romans saints. So is everybody a saint? That's another that's another word that get thrown around. They got songs, saints go marching in, and they tell you that everybody is saint. Let's see who the saints are. Read that. Psalms chapter 148 and verse 14. Uh -huh. He also exalted the horn of his people. Uh -huh. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Okay, read. Even of the children of Israel. Even mean only. Read it again. He also exalted the horn of his people. The praise of all his saints. Even of the children of Israel. So who are the saints? Children of Israel. You see how the world... It's contrary to what the Bible says. The Bible say one thing, but then when we see pastors and whomever, they saying some contrary to what the Bible says. Go back to Romans 1 now. Romans chapter 1 and verse 7. Read. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father. So before you go anywhere else in the book of Romans, who is the audience? The Israelites. That's simple, easy to understand. But then somebody will come in our face and they'll be like, no, God love everybody. God came for every power. I'm reading in the first chapter of the book and it say Israel. That's twisting and turning the word. You ain't supposed to do that. So from there, as we talking about who the Gentiles is and who they are, from there, let's get one more. Go to Romans 9. We read in Romans chapter 1 who the, who the audience is. Let's see if it changed. Now we're in Romans 9. We're jumping to the ninth chapter. Did the audience change? No, straight to the point. The book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 4. Who are Israelites? Wait, wait, no. Three. Verse three. We got to read. Okay. Three. Verse 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. That's Paul talking. Paul just said, I wish... I can put myself on the line so all Israel could be accepted, so they can come into this grace. He said, my kinsmen according to the flesh. He finna say who his kinsmen is, or his kinsfolk. Read. Who are Israelites? Who is his kinsfolk? Who are Israelites? You see, we went from chapter 1, and then we went up to 9. The audience ain't changed. So what we got to stop doing as a people, we got to get this off our brain. The Bible doesn't say none of this stuff that they talk about. None of this stuff we see on TBN is in the Bible. None of it. So, from there, let's get how Paul looked. Acts 27, Acts 21 and 37. How does Paul look? Because then they make a, a movie on Paul. Then a recent movie come out on Paul. Acts 21. Let's see how Paul looked. Acts chapter 21 and verse 37. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? So I this man that Paul was talking to was one of the chief captains, one of the Roman soldiers, a white man. Paul turned and spoke to him in Greek. Paul, one of Paul's gifts was Paul could speak different languages. So the white, this white man turned to Paul and Paul speak to him. He said, Damn, you speak Greek. Why would he say that if he already a Greek? Read. Art thou that Egyptian? Wait a minute. What did he just call Paul? Art thou that Egyptian? If you gonna call me an Egyptian, how do I gotta look? Dark. I'm dark skinned. I'm black. If you mistaken me for an Egyptian, that's a dark skinned people. So the man Paul that wrote Romans, Ephesians, Corinthians, Hebrews, Philemon, Timothy, um, Corinthians, Colossians, but uh, Philippians, the man that wrote all them books is a black man from the tribe of Benjamin, an Israelite. That's what y'all just learned just now. And y'all seen in his letters, because we didn't make nothing up, we showed you. He was only speaking to his people. So where's the confusion? Christianity and all this other stuff telling us a different message than what the Bible says. So now. Let's show y'all that y'all are Israelites. Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. I wanted to deal with that first because people will blurt that stuff out. Oh, what about the Gentiles? You got to know the context when the Bible is being read. Are those Gentiles right there the other races or is that the Israelites where you read that? You got to know the context. You got to think. Give me the atrocities. Y'all do know 
When Christ got crucified, and by the way, Christ is a black man, if y'all didn't know that. We're going to show y'all that. Y'all think Christ the only black man that got put on the cross? Peter got put on the cross. Y'all familiar with Peter, one of his disciples? Peter got crucified. Peter and his wife got killed. But these are atrocities that they did to us. I'm going to walk around and show this. These are the atrocities that they did to us. Is this the human zoo? Yep. They put us in human zoos. You can walk around with that, officer. That's more pictures. These is pictures, real photos of what they did to us. That's a human zoo. They had our people in human zoos. Why am I bringing that up? If you telling me, let's just examine that. You think Jesus Christ, you think God going to come and say the people that did that to you. I'm just saying. We can start there. That makes no sense. The people that did that to you, Jesus Christ is going to crack the sky and come save them? Last time I checked, they ruling the earth, are they not? They ruling the earth. And they ruled the earth by what? War. We're going to deal with that later. Deuteronomy 28. We read one, so we got the audience. Now let's go to 28 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So when you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 through 14 is the blessings, and verse 15 through 68 is the curses for disobedience. So Moses was talking to the Israelites. Don't forget chapter 1, verse 1 of Deuteronomy. It said he spake to all Israel. Moses himself was an Israelite as well. So right here he's telling them, if you listen to God, he's going to put you over everybody. You're going to rule the earth. The Israelites did not listen. How do we know that? We know that through history. Those photos we just showed is proof we are the Israelites. We're going to show you that. Deuteronomy 28 verse 15 now. Now let's read the curses. Are our people, I'm going to ask, are blacks and Hispanics living blessings right now? Hell no. I don't care what we got. Own business, whatever. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right here, Moses said, look, if you don't do everything that God said, all these curses is going to come upon you. When you hear the word curse, is that a good or a bad thing? That's a bad thing. You know that just off top. Read. Let's get some of the curses for disobedience. Read. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Let's deal with that first part. What group of people is cursed in every city that they live in? Blacks and Hispanics. When you ride through Chicago, it's no You're coincidence. Talking about, talking about that. It's no like coincidence. To, to the black neighborhood, man. Exactly. Wicked Park and Wicked Park, man. Uh, they not having and, uh, it. It's not going. Bro, they not having it. Yeah. And our people, I'm speaking mainly about black folks. They looking at it the wrong way. Those is your brothers. They put your brothers in your neighborhood with you, cause we the same people. When you ride down Ashland, you ride down Ashland, you see what Auburn, Gresham, Inglewood, then what? Back of the yard, Mexican neighborhood. That's not a coincidence. Our neighborhood is always next to each other because we the same people and they got their foot on both of our necks. Read that again. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So that's modern times. We know how we curse in the city. Poverty, gang violence, low income housing, redlining. Are they not raising up the cost of living here? It's getting hard. It's getting hard to live not only just in Chicago, but Illinois. Read it again. Yeah. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Let me see. You can give me that. It said, cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. So, when you look at this sign here, this type of stuff didn't just happen here with this human zoo. This type of stuff happened in all these 50 states. 
We always talk about slavery down south. It's racist here. Who knows some history about Chicago? Anybody? A lot of these neighborhoods that we live in, who used to live there first? White folks. Bootlegging, Al Capone, all them dudes. Those was Italians, those was white folks. Who knows the origins of the gangs? Do we know how the gangs actually started? I'm talking about the Stones, the GDs, the Kings, the Breeds. Those community, uh, those community activists, they go lunch and lunch stuff, helping out the kids. They, they go, you know. Is something else you're missing? Yeah. What was they doing initially? What did they have to do? It was something that all of them had to do before they started fighting each other. Because that came later. Because you named everything else. They had to protect the neighborhood. Like we had, y'all, when you look into this history, we had to fight the white folks that was already here. Humble Park, that was white folks. When our Puerto Rican brothers came over here, they had to battle them in Humble Park. When we moved on 35th, who familiar with Bronzeville? Anybody from Bronzeville? You familiar with Bronzeville? Low end. You know, one side of 35th was us. They used to call that the Black Belt. That's where all the black businesses was. The other side of 35th, what neighborhood that is? The Gap. That's the Gap, man. Uh-uh, that's, uh... That's 35th, I'm too far down. Bridgeport. I'm probably sure. Oh, yeah, Bridgeport. Bridgeport. Oh, no, with, with, uh, White Sox Park. Park. White Sox Park, yeah. We could not go on the side where White Sox Park is, bro. Ask some of these old heads. I've met people personally that was they used to have to duke it out if they went to a Sox game. Used to get chased across the damn Ryan. That bridge, they used to get chased across that bridge from white folks. Read that again. Verse Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Uh-huh. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. So we are the ones that's cursed in the city. That's why I'm giving y'all these examples. Don't pick this book up and think it's a fairy tale. This is real life. These things actually happen in history. You just got to connect the dots. Read on. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. That's easy. Who was cursed in the field? Okay. We was. If you was in Brazil in slavery, what did they have you doing? Cutting sugar cane. Was our people getting paid for that? No. Down south, they had us picking cotton. Was we, was we getting paid for that? No. Today, how we cursed in the field. It don't matter what type of job you got. You still struggling. That's a curse. Read on. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy baskets and thy store. Uh huh. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Hold on. It said, Cursed shall be the, thy basket and thy store. When we have businesses, a lot of black businesses don't thrive. A lot of Hispanics that open up bodegas, a lot of their bodegas end up getting closed. Why? Property tax. They getting hit over the head with all these different fees. That's a curse. How was we cursed back then? We didn't, anything we made, they took ownership of. This traffic light right here, who know who made that? A black man made that. You think they giving his people money for that? Absolutely not. Read on. Verse 18. <laughs> Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. So God said, because you don't listen to me, cursed shall be the fruit of your body. What comes from our bodies? It said, cursed shall be the fruit of your body. What comes from your body? What you say, sis? Your seed, your lineage? Oh, yeah, yeah. Your what? Legacy. Your kids. Do not we suffer generational curses? That's what that's talking about. If you die and you got debt, who they going to bring the debt to? Yo, kids, read that again. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land. And the fruit of your land is black farmers, but it ain't a lot of them. They trying to sabotage their land. Read. The increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. That's your animals. We had animals back then. We had flocks. We had cattle. That stuff got taken away from us. Read on. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. That's us going through oppression, trauma, when we die, when we born, and when we die. Uh, read on. The Lord shall send upon thee curse, vexation, 
rebuked, and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing. So it said God is going to curse everything we do because of the wickedness of our doings. What's some wicked stuff that our people doing? Stealing. Stealing, what else? <laughs> They going Cadillac converter crazy. Home invasions. What else? Prostitution. Some of our people, as sad as it is, some of them is involved in the sex trafficking. The traffic. It ain't always other races taking black and Hispanic girls. It's some of our people, sad to say, that's involved in that. So he said, because you don't want to do what I say, I'm going to punish you for the evil of your doings. Read on. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. What happened? Whereby thou hast forsaken me. We forgot God. When you read about who familiar with King David, King Solomon? Those is our ancestors. When we was ruling under them, because together Solomon ruled for 40 years, David ruled for 40 years. That's the total how many years? That's 80 years that we ruled the earth. When we was ruling the earth. We started off good, but then what we started doing? Anybody familiar? What'd you say? Sinning. Following other people. Breaking God's rules. And if you look at us, we do the same thing. Tattoos. Is that our culture? No. Where we learn that from? Other races of people. Mexicans, your brothers. I can show you that. They Israelites. We're going to get into that too. All this stuff that we do, we learned this from other people. Even gang banging. We was just talking about that. Italians was gang banging through here. We wasn't doing that. Jump down to verse. Let's get 25. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. Mm -hmm. And shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. What people were scattered all over the earth? We were. You know it's more than one uh, slave trade. Everybody familiar with the transatlantic slave trade, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's the sub-Saharan slave trade where Arabs had us enslaved. So you had one slave trade took us, what's that? Mm -hmm. West, and then you had the other slave trade took us east to India, Pakistan, China, Japan. Who heard of uh, Yasuke, the black samurai? Anybody heard of him? The samurais was black. That stuff they don't teach you. But how did those men get over there? Those men got over there through what? Read it again. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. So because we didn't listen to God, we would get killed by our enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. We will start losing wars. Read. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And shall be what? And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. That's historical fact. We got removed into all the nations on the earth. That's why you, you go anywhere in the earth. You go in, in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. You're going to find our people there. They got Afro-Palestinians. Those are our people that got brought there years ago in slavery. Read on. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, uh -huh. and unto the beast of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Do not when we get killed or shot down, our body sit out there a long time. That's what that's talking about. Do not when people kill us, they get found not guilty. That's in the Bible. We finna show you that. Hold that, you Zechariah 11 and 5. We finna show you that. All these things that happen to us, it's a result of not listening to God. That's it. It's just that simple. If we want it to stop, we got to do what God say. Read that. Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. That might be hard to hear right there. Read that again. Whose possessors. Stop right there. It said whose possessors. Who believes that they're possessed by some somebody? Meaning somebody on you. Who believes that? Who, who does not believe that somebody got ownership over you? Who does not believe that? You said you don't? You don't believe. Okay. Go to Midway, buy a ticket and say you flying to Africa. Is it just that simple? 
what you got to do before you can fly over there. Because that's out the country. What you got to do? What is that? Vaccines. You got to go get your vaccines. Yeah, they gonna All make, that stuff they gonna you name. They're going to shoot you up just to get you over there. Does that not show that somebody got power over you? Somebody possess you? You have to get permission from somebody to go somewhere else. You see that? If you was really free, for real, for real, you wouldn't need no passport. You just jump on the plane, you gone. But all them steps that he just named, you got to do all that. Then when you get to the place that you at, what you got to do with your money? You say what? You got to convert your money. You, you, you still possessed. You still owned by somebody. Because if you won, you could do as you please. Read that again. Whose possessors slay them. They do what? Slay them. Whose possessors slay them. Who killed Nat Turner? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Slave owners. Who? What people? White folks. Who shot down Tamir Rice? Sandra Bland. Yeah. Philando Castile. Yeah. Slave owners, white folks. So it said who what? Whose possessors slay them. And then they do what? They kill you, they go to court, and then what? And hold themselves not guilty. You think that's a coincidence that that's in here? You would never hear this in church. This is literally what happens to us when we get shot down. And I only name the names that I know of. You can go on YouTube, they got a whole compilation of blacks and Hispanics that got unlawfully gunned down. And there's some cases that you don't even know about because they don't make the news. That's a curse that befalls the Israelites. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 26. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air. And, un and unto the beasts of the earth. Did not when George Floyd got that knee on his neck, they still kept the handcuffs on him even though he died. Maybe y'all forgot the video. He got suffocated to death, and the man dead in handcuffs, body dangling, he's still right there. What they do, pick him up, throw him in the back of the cop cop, like he's still alive. Read that again. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, uh -huh. and unto the beasts of the earth. And no man shall fray them away. Our bodies sit out there. That happened to us then in history. When you read about us when we was in Assyrian captivity, the Assyrians would kill us and leave our bodies out there. It's still happening to us today. Why? Because we are the Israelites. Jump down to verse, what's that? Verse 30. Verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Read that again. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Now he was on them slave ships, was not some of us married? So what is the Bible telling us what happened to us? It happened in history too. Read that again. Thou shalt betroth a wife. So you got a wife. You already married. Read. And another man shall lie with her. What is that saying? That's the slave, the slave woman. Doing what? Lay with your wife. Raping your yeah. wife. Yeah. They got that in all these movies. Goodbye Uncle Tom, 12 Years a Slave, Roots. This stuff really happened. Not only was the women raped during slavery, who else was raped? Say that again. Men, children, the process for the men they called was buck breaking. Hold that, let's go to, let's get the Willie Lynch letter real quick. Find that highlight, or you know what, find the highlight where it say the buck breaking process. Read that again. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Um, who saw the movie The Butler? Anybody saw that movie The Butler? With Forrest Whitaker? Anybody see that movie? But in the movie, Forrest Whitaker's character, right, he was a little boy. Slave master just took his mama in front of his dad's face. Raped her in the shack, he come out, zipping his pants up. What happened? You saw the movie? Well, when his father confronted the slave master, like, hey, what you doing? What you think happened to him? Huh? No, nah, he shot him in his face. Pulled the gun out, shot him in the face. Forrest Whitaker's character 
was a little boy when this happened. So he witnessed the slave master blowing his father's brains out. No, I'm so we couldn't do nothing about this. How old are you, sir? 13. You 13. You need to look into your history. Forget all this other stuff. Look into your history of what happened to your people. So going back to that, his father was murdered right in front of his face. Something else. It's a book I want you to look into. A thousand years of lynchings. Do you think it was just grown men and grown women that got lynched? You know what lynching is? Lynching is when they beat you, then they hang you in the tree and set your body on fire. They did that to our mothers, our fathers, and guess what? The children too. You can look up pictures where they hung up a whole family in the trees. You know something else I want you to look up? Look up Mexican lynchings. Why you think they was getting lynched too? Because we the same people. Read that again. You found that buck breaking process? We the same people, yep. Why, why they treat the Mexicans better? You said why they treat the Mexicans better? Who? Like, the oppressors. They don't treat them no better. But they get more benefits. That's just how it seen. That's just how it seen. You ever heard of ICE? What's ICE? Immigrant, I'll be forgetting the name. Immigrant. They, uh, those are the ones that come around and, and, and deport them. Yeah, the immigrant, immigrant like Customs them. Enforcement. That's what yeah. it stands for. They split up families. I split up families. So the Mexicans don't have it better. I like how it was like, like in the 1990s, like, you can't have a man in the house without it. Like, That's the public assistance, what you say? <laughs> yep. That's the public assistance. You ever seen. Some of y'all in here, if y'all upper age, y'all seen this movie. Who saw Claudine? Y'all ain't see Claudine? Bruh. Right. Who saw it? Who saw it? You saw it, man? You seen it. Y'all go watch Claudine if you ain't seen Claudine. So what you talking about, bruh, that's real. When you watch Claudine, she had to hide the man in the closet, clean the toilet seat off so it ain't no pubic hairs, because the social worker used to come to the house. All that women, WIC stand for women, infants, and children. All that government assistance, the woman could not have a man in the house. That's real. So what you talking about, they actually put that in a, a real move, but that's something that really happened. Uh, read that. I'll read that first. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50 and verse 33. Uh -huh. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel, and the children of Judah were oppressed together. So the children of Judah, the children of Israel, that's the blacks and the Hispanics. When you read the history, we split. As a kingdom, we split into two because of various sin and things that was taking place. So read that again. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together. Listen to what God said. He said we was oppressed together. Blacks and Hispanics are still being oppressed together even to this day because I still breaking up families. You come over here and you're trying to start a new life. You may be from Jalisco, Secas, Tecas, Tier 1. You're trying to start a new life. You ain't, they don't even let you get settled. They'll break your family up. Now you got to go back to Mexico and your kids still over here. That's a curse that happens to who? The Israelites. Go back to Deuteronomy 28 now. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 30. Uh -huh. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. On that same point, because I ain't forgot, because we got we to touch that buck breaking process that was happening. What did, let me ask this, who's familiar with 1492? Who's familiar with that? Anybody familiar with that date? Columbus? Yeah, that's Columbus. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what did Columbus do? I'm gonna start with you because you young. What did they say Columbus did when he came over here? They say he took over, that's what they say. It's a lie, but I wanna I want you to tell me what they be saying in school. It's BS. He found the area. Both of y'all right, that's what they say. He didn't come over here to find a new area. This is another book. You might forget, bro. 
This book is called A Brief Account of the Destruction of the Indies. This book tells you what Christopher Columbus and the Spanish did to the Latinos when they came to this side of the earth. They did not come over here to have a shindig or a party. They came over here to rob and steal. Read 10 right here. This is a brief account of the destruction of the Indians. Why am I going here to show blacks and Hispanics suffered the same things? There's some too that we don't talk about much. Slavery didn't just start in 1619. That's the date that they always give. They actually been putting us in slavery far back as 1441. 1492, that's when Columbus came over with the Spanish to conquer, to steal, to kill over here on this land. Read, page 10. Which the Spaniards no sooner, no sooner perceived, but they mounted on generous steeds, well weaponed with lances and swords. So this is telling you how the Spanish came over here. They came over here with weapons. They didn't come over here with gifts. They came over here with weapons. Read. Begin to exercise their bloody butcheries and strangers. What did they do? Exercise their bloody butcheries and strangers. They butchered Latinos when they came over here. That's why when I hear my Latino people talking about, I ain't Spanish. I come from Spain. I'll be like, you out of your mind. No, you don't. Those are white folks. Spanish Caucasian, Russian Caucasian, German Caucasian, the list goes on. Those are all Caucasians. Read. And overrunning their cities and towns. They did what? And overrunning their cities and towns. Who's familiar with the Aztecs? Who's familiar with the Aztecs? The Aztecs, the Incas, the Mayans. Those was civilizations that was already over here. But when the Spaniards came over here, it's telling you they ran people out of their towns. They ran the Aztecs out of their empire, the Incas out of their empire, the Mayans out of their empire. And say they disappeared. I can't hear you. They be saying stuff like that. No. This was a real civilization. People lived. It was families, babies. And what did they do? Read it again. And overrunning their cities and towns. Uh -huh. Spared no age or sex. Nay, not so much as women with child, but ripping up their bellies. Tore them alive in pieces. So it say they killed pregnant women when they came over here. Now it said they didn't spare man, women, or child. Does the Bible say that? Go back to Deuteronomy 28. So this book, A Brief Account of the Destruction of the Indies, this is a man named Bartolomeu de la Casas. He was writing down everything they was doing. When you get, it's a bigger book that had pictures. He had to draw it because they didn't have cameras back then. He was drawing everything the Spanish was doing to the Latino. Read that, Deuteronomy 28, 49. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. Where did the Spanish come from? Where they come from? Europe. The Eastern Hemisphere. It said, a nation going to come against the Israelites from far away. Read. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flight. You mean that other sign with the uh, coins on it? Yep, 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 yep. What you going to learn, you can walk around with it. What you going to learn, right, about this white man, their favorite symbol they like to use. What am Go. Who said? Go. Eagle. Oh. Hey, baby. They love to use <laughs> the eagle. That's proof right there. And it's, we got we got a list that starts all the way back from Rome. No matter what they call themselves, the Romans, the French, the Portuguese, they always use their bird. That bird is a bird of prey. That's their symbol. Read it again. Hey. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, uh -huh. from the end of the earth, as swift as an eagle flight. Read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So contrary to what my Latin people be thinking, Spanish is not your language. You learn that in slavery. Go ahead. Well, I, well hey, what, what about the Greeks? Uh, the, the Greeks? Yeah, the Greeks. Yeah, the Greeks. Are they, are they Yep. 
because Greece is right by Rome. Those is Caucasians too. Those is all Caucasians. So you was here first. I mean, you think that nothing really to the civilization? We had a civilization here first. But you talking about this stuff here now? Yeah, like Rome and stuff. You got some good stuff. Yeah, they had us in slavery, just like America. All these other places. If they had us in slavery, they made us build it up. No, it just wasn't America. Wherever we was at, they had us in slavery, bro. Wherever we was at. Read. Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. That's why we gave examples. We read out of this book. They was killing men, women, and children. They even hung old folks, bro. You can look this up. We got grandfathers, grandmas. They was lynching old folks. Read that again. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And why are we reading that? Did not we suffer this as a people? Can we all agree we all suffered this as a people? You are the Israelites. That's cold hard fact, straight proof. You are the Israelites. From there, let's read this now. What did they do to the man? Butt breaking process. That's the Willie Lynch letter. I would suggest y'all get it before they make it a thousand dollars because that's something else that they doing. When we pull out books showing our history, they jack the price up. Tell me why a book need to be fifteen hundred dollars. Tell y'all, this book gonna be twelve thousand dollars if y'all don't get it. Willie Lynch letter, you better get it now. Right now it's what like ten, fifteen dollars, if that. Willie Lynch letter. Yep. Go to our gate. This is the Willie Lynch letter, page 16. Understanding is the best thing. Therefore, we shall go deeper into the area of the subject matter concerning what we have produced here in this breaking process of the female nigger. Read that again. What is this? This is the breaking uh, process of the female nigger. This is the breaking process of the female nigger. Willie Lynch was a slave master who wrote down a whole game plan on how to make a slave. And that's how you... What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.